Hi guys, this is Jason on .com and I'm here with the Allview X4 Soul for full review. For those of you not familiar with this name, it's the locally integrated Romanian version of the Johnny S9 handset and this is the first dual camera phone from Allview and also from Johnny. As you can see, we have a dual camera at the back. So it debuted internationally in November last year. You can find it priced at around $371, which is quite good for a dual camera phone that on paper should rival the iPhone 7 Plus thanks to its bokeh effect. So it's an upper mid-range phone with a dual SIM setup, also dual camera. It's also good looking and it's an affordable alternative to the Huawei Mate 9 which we recently tested. Now, as far as the design is concerned, this is certainly an elegant phone, possibly the most elegant all view phone we've ever tested. It has a 2.5D glass panel at the front and also it has the same feel as touching an iPhone which not many models have. It's possibly the most iPhone inspired phone that manages not to be labeled as an iPhone clone measures 7.4 millimeters in thickness and weighs 167.5 grams which means it's only 0.1 millimeters thicker than the iPhone 7 Plus and quite a bit lighter. In the meantime it's very close in measurements to the Huawei P9 Plus if you really want to make a comparison. It's made 97% of metal, has a very good grip, has comfy buttons, those ones here which are a bit pill shaped, once again throwback to the iPhone. It's a quite a long phone, so one hand usage may be cramped. Well, my hand handles it okay, but uh, other people with smaller hands may not find it that okay. It comes in an elegant shade of black, it's solidly built, comfy and pretty, and there are no compromises here, everything checks out just fine. Now, as far as the display is concerned, this one is an IPS LCD with a full HD resolution and a 5.5 inch diagonal, as well as full lamination and in cell touch technology, narrow bezels, Gorilla Glass protection, and we got a video app to test the um, performance of the screen. So, video app, and here we go. So, the video app's options include DTS for acoustics and also a pop-up play feature and that's about it. Now, as far as the actual viewing experience goes, we got here a bright screen, well calibrated colors, I would say a mid-level contrast, wide view angles and a pretty crisp image. Though you don't have to take my word for it, we have tests for that purpose, so here we go, let's check out the tests. Okay, so the pixel setup here is RGB stripes and we also measured the brightness and achieved 436 lux units, which is quite good. It's superior to the Huawei Mate 8, for example, and to the Huawei Honor 8, but scores below the HTC One A9, for example. Okay, now uh, that this is out of the way and we convinced ourselves that we're dealing with a pretty well lit screen, let's see what the options are for the same display. So we got brightness level, adaptive brightness, economical backlight, phone style and size, wallpaper, sleep, daydream, skylight, multitask style, which is native or card and finally cast screen. So overall a pretty solid screen, not much to object here, colors good, brightness good and let's go to the other hardware that we have installed on this phone. We got an octa-core MediaTek Helio. P10 processor clocked at 2 GHz, this is the CPU, MediaTek Helio P10, accompanied by the Mali T860 GPU, 4 GB of RAM, 64 GB of storage and a micro SD card slot to beef up the storage by a bit. We also have a hybrid C micro SD card and uh, we have no lag here, you can open up however many apps you want, you can run the latest games and you have absolutely zero problems with the lag or delays, so that's nice. And games are also handled like a champ. So let's see what's happening in this area. We've got Riptide GP Renegade here for benchmark purposes. This one is also a console game. It debuted initially on the PlayStation last summer and then it got to mobile. And let's see just how nicely it looks on this mobile. So far so good. Riptide GP Renegade. Nicely rendered water. I see no lag and no delay. Nice response to my tilt control. No frame rate drop. Excellent textures, shadow, lighting, pixels, whatever you want, vexels. Everything is nicely rendered. Okay, with gaming out of the way, it's time to address the benchmarks. We also did those and let's see what came out of that experience. 
So we did the usual array of benchmarks which includes Quadrant, well in Quadrant we were able to score above the Samsung Galaxy A5 2016 and the HTC One A9 but below the HTC One M8 and in on 226 we got this score here which surpasses the Motorola Moto M and the Huawei Honor 7 but scores below the Asus Zenfone 3 and Huawei Nova. In the benchmark of the gamers which is 3D Mark iStorm Unlimited. We got this rather modest score, which is uh, a bit underwhelming and uh, only slightly above the old HTC One M7. And also, GFX Bench confirms that the GPU is not too hot here. We're around the level of the Motorola Moto M and the Huawei P9 Lite, but not more than that. Luckily, there were no problems as far as the temperature is concerned. We reached 38.8 degrees Celsius after running the game Riptide GP Renegade and after running the intensive benchmark GFX Bench only 32.9 degrees Celsius. So there is no overheating here, luckily. Since performance checks out, I guess it's time to go to the battery section. We're dealing here with a smartphone, the Allview uh, X4 Soul that has a lithium polymer 3000 mAh battery and the charger is a 5 volt 2 ampere one. On paper we are promised 878 minutes of talk time, sounds pretty impressive and by the way you can use uh, this port here and the USB OTG cable bundle to charge other phones, that's nice, you don't see that every day on modern devices. Now let's look up the battery test and see how we did on this phone as far as that aspect is concerned. So, when it comes to continuous HD video playback in a loop, we achieved 8 hours and 40 minutes, which is, I would say, mid-level. It beats the Galaxy Note 4 and the Xperia Z5, but it scores below the Yumi Touch, so only mid-level. Now, as far as the continuous usage goes, it's a bit underwhelming, 6 hours and 56 minutes. It's above the Nexus 6P, but also below the Vernitor and Huawei Honor 4X. The charging is done in 2 hours and 20 minutes, which is rather okay, and it's superior to the Allview X2 Extreme, for example. By the way, this phone also charges slower than the OnePlus 2, in case you're wondering, and we also have special settings for the battery, which will be found in the advanced settings area, and here we have to look them up manage battery here we go we got a power manager with options like normal mode power saving mode and extreme mode which actually has a few sub settings to play with and save this is the extreme mode with the basic options available and we also have intelligent power saving in sleep mode battery optimization and that's about it i would say a mid-level battery not exactly very impressive no records broken just okay on the acoustic front we got two grills at the bottom only the right one covers an actual speaker if you've seen an old view phone before you know exactly the kind of music player you get this is it, the same UI that we always see and the same pretty good equalizer with options for a variety of headphones, DTS function, sound modes related to music genres and 5 channels to play with. Ok, now let's actually listen to some tunes that we got on this device. Ok, conclusions, we got a pretty loud sound, uh, also clear sounding, a uh, reasonable bass, the, night, the high notes are heard pretty ok, and the back does not vibrate as some other phones do nowadays. It's good all around as far as the note rendition goes, and we also did a decibel meter test for the same speaker, and let's see what came out of that experience. So download and we were able to achieve 89.2 decibels when using our typical acoustic sample at the front and back, not bad. Things got even better when we played the game Riptide GP Renegade, 92.7 decibels, so 89 decibels and 92.7 decibels. It's top 10 material for sure, it beats the iPhone 7 and Galaxy S6 but scores below the Le Echo Li Max 2. I will not show the headphones if you've seen an all view mid-range phone or high-end phone for the past year or so. They're exactly the same, they're comfy, we have a nice build, loud and clear and good noise cancelling. Aside from that we also have FM radio here and unlike many other phones there's no BES enhanced in the settings this time. Now we're off to the most interesting point of the Allview X4 Soul which is the 
dual camera at the back. So we got a 13 megapixel shooter with f2.0 aperture and a 5 megapixel shooter with f2.2 aperture. The main cam, the main sensor is the IMX258 which was also found on the OnePlus X and uh, the Xperia XA and the Allview P9 Energy. The secondary camera serves to take depth of field info and helps you capture those bokeh effects. At the front, there's a 13 megapixel camera with an LED flash hidden here for improved and better lit selfies. Now let's close up all the apps. Okay, and see just how fast the camera app can start. The answer is pretty fast. Okay, now the interface is once again typical for an Allview phone if you've seen them for the past two years, but an addition is the bokeh mode. So the settings include anti-banding, guidelines, geotag, picture size, a countdown, there is also capture mode, sound and so forth. We got HDR, we got the flash options and of course the modes, quite a few of them. Card scanner, mood photo, take anytime, smart scan, translation, professional, smart scene, Pick note, panorama, slow motion, GIF, night, time lapse, and text recognition. Professional also triggers a bunch of extra options here, like exposure, ISO, white balance, shutter, and uh, I'm guessing this one has to do with the focus. Okay, now if you want to revert to the normal mode, you press photo here and you're done. On the right side, we get the effects and the modes, we got bokeh, photo, face beauty, and video, to name just a few. Now the actual camera experience, you saw a fast start, pretty fast photo taking, fluid, very fluid zoom and the focus speed is I would say reasonable. If you opt for video, you got your options here, you can film up to uh, full HD and the bokeh mode is this one here, it's able to take a shot and then you can refocus however you want and alter the blur, it's usually good to have two subjects so you can compare the foreground and background basically blur one thing and change the aperture as you please so blurrier and clearer and as i said it's good to have two objects not one so let's go to the actual gallery of captures that we did during the day and during the night and judge for ourselves so here we are this is the camera area and let's see what we're dealing with here so here we have a variety of shots that were taken using the bokeh mode you can focus on the foreground on the background and you can change the point of focus however you please and also the blur and clarity now we go outside during the day it was mid-february a sunny mid-february day and by the way we also had the huawei mate 9 with us during the test and the allview x4 soul managed to hold its own even compared to the mate 9 which is not bad we got good clarity here nice dynamic range and colors pretty nice details in both the landscape and close-up shots you can zoom into the shots and you'll see that we don't lose many details. Regular shot, HDR shot checks out fine. Some of the pictures feel a bit darker. Of course, we don't have the aperture of the big flagships, but still we're doing pretty fine. We can battle the big mid-rangers from last year, like the Zenfone 3, the Huawei Nova. And by the way, not bad details when zooming in. And the selfies, well, the background feels a bit burnt and dynamic range problems appear, but the texture of the skin and of the hair are quite good for these selfies. And by the way, we also have a flash to help you. The panorama is here as well with 6816 over 1824 pixels, good clarity and exposure. And once again, a bunch of shots here with good dynamic range, colors, clarity, whatever you please, everything is here. I would put this on par with the um, Samsung Galaxy A5 2016, also with the Huawei Nova, and basically it's the same camera as the Allview P9 Energy with an extra bokeh camera. Of course, selfies could be better, but you cannot get everything you want. You should avoid having the sun behind you, that's the key. And by the way, those uh, bokeh effects are just as good as those achieved with the iPhone 7 Plus and the Huawei Mate 9, which says quite a bit about the quality of this phone. And that was daytime capture. Now let's see the low light photo capture. Okay, so I'm going to start with this. So we got big street light halos, a bluish hue, and the flash also tends to make things blue out of nowhere. But the lighting was quite okay. There's some clarity drop sometimes. We managed to register some good, good close-ups and pretty good details. But in the end, 
it's nothing truly special and it's below the likes of the Asus Zenfone 3. Um, it's maybe above the older Huawei Honor phones but not more than that. When you're close up details are fine, when you're playing with bokeh everything is fine but in the distance the blue hue and street light halos are a problem. And that's all we had to say about the photos. Now let's go to the videos. So we were able to shoot MP4 videos in full HD, 30 frames per second and 70 mega per second. And let's see just how these clips looked. So first video is this one here. And the first thing I noticed is that we have a good microphone, able to capture everything that people are saying around me including look at that guy, he's taking photos, got a nice exposure change here, realistic colors, some detail loss when zooming in and we also pulled a slow motion clip that came out fine. And this is the zoom in, which is uh, I would say, well, not so good because you lose the details and we also did an electronic image stabilization test by walking around and uh, filming. So here we go. This electronic image stabilization was actually quite solid, it reminded me of the solid iPhone 6, we didn't lose focus, so that's a nice thing to have. Okay, so let's go further, I have to mention that uh, the camera is able to capture only so, so sound when the wind is quite strong, and also the details in the distance get lost quite fast, the exposure change sometimes happens in steps, which is a bit annoying, but in general I was happy with the clarity, the focus and the lighting. So overall it's just okay, mid-range okay, and it doesn't have flaws but also it won't win any awards. That's during the day. At least I'm happy with the electronic image stabilization and when we go at night things change a bit and they change a bit for the worse. So here we go, that's the low light capture, it's at 14 frames per second, 8 mega per second bitrate, it's rather foggy and yellowish, there's a bit of ghosting going on here. But we do have a good microphone, that's for sure, and when we zoom in, the zoom is rather poor, and we got a bluish hue, and also some big halos and a shaky image, basically forgettable like any other old view phone at night. So, low light capture, not very impressive when it comes to the video and photo. Now, on the browser front, this is the pre-installed browser, but you can also opt for Chrome if you want to, so uh, here we go, let's access gsmdome.com. As you can see, not exactly very fast. And the benchmarks also confirm it. I'm talking about the Chrome benchmarks as well. This is our website. And this is the input method via stock keyboard, also supporting the um, swipe feature. Okay, now that we're done with the browser, it's time to check out the connectivity. So we're dealing here with a phone that sadly does not have USB Type-C at the bottom or in regular USB. There's LT Category 6 here, uh, FDD and TDD, dual nano SIM slots, HD voice, Bluetooth 4.0, HSDPA, Wi-Fi A, B, G, N, Wi-Fi Direct, micro USB 2.0 and no NFC. Now as far as the calls are concerned, you go here and we have features like a blacklist, speed dial and a bunch of settings, like call settings. The actual calls are loud and clear and we got good noise cancelling and we also did a speed test. So let's see what happened there. These are the results we achieved. The 4G tops at 63 mega per second download, 47 mega per second upload, Wi-Fi 73 mega per second download, 25 in upload, I would say within the normal limits. Now, as far as the software is concerned, this is Android 6.0 Marshmallow, heavily customized by AllView. This is called Visual UI 1.1 and it has quite a few features. The multitasking is still based on a carousel. You swipe down for notifications and swipe up to reveal the quick settings and other options here. And even more are available here, including a screen recorder, nice to have, fake call and a split screen with those apps available. So you can split your screen between a video and Facebook or Skype or note taking and a couple of other apps. So you can take notes while you're uh, looking for a photo and you can also resize your split screens. Now, if you keep the home screen pressed, you got access to apps, nice looking widgets and effects, of course. If you swipe to the side on this home button here, you'll trigger a shortcut area like on the Galaxy S7 Edge and these are basically applications and shortcuts to those applications which you can remove or add more. That's it, it's called the Edge Bar, you can trigger it on the right or on the left, not a problem, it's a cute little extra. Now if you go to the settings, 
you're going to be met with typical options for an all-view phone, so connectivity, display, sound, do not disturb, security, advanced settings which include smart gestures, got smart dial, smart answer, pause alarm, double click wake up, suspend button which is this floating widget that's very familiar and then we got smart protect eye which protects your eyes during the night so less blue light so you can sleep better we got the edge bar which you saw before global beauty and led indicator reverse charge via micro usb and of course there's also security here you can have a guest mode you have the screen lock security password anti-call recording and camera guard nice to have and finally of course the fingerprint scanner which i'm going to activate okay easy unlock screen lock security password continue and let's see just how efficient this is so that was fast and that was also fast so you can see it's quite efficient for unlocking the device in a jiffy another thing to mention is that if you swipe up on the home screen you can trigger some more options like launcher team edit desktop wallpaper desktop settings related to the layout smart gestures and all that and of course system settings are also here and there are other things important to mention we have a trash selection in the gallery so you can change your mind about deleting pictures you got a private space where you can hide your private photos and files and protect them with a fingerprint and as far as the pre-installed applications list goes quite a few of them here 57 pre-installed applications quite a bit bloatware and we got the likes of all watch bit defender mobile security chameleon child mode there's also the microsoft package excel word powerpoint skype and all that one note there's outlook here there's a private space there's skype of course there's snapseed so for some very nice photo editing so you tap so you then select and you'll have a huge amount of options to edit pictures nice to have this pre-installed on the phone and of course several more we got system manager trip plan video editor and word are also here time for the verdict folks folks we're done with this this is the all view x4 soul which is a handset also known as a johnny phone which i mentioned before so the all view x4 soul has a dual camera and on the pro side it's an elegant and pretty looking phone the bokeh effect is very nice to see and to use we get a dual camera that does its job fine during the day and also bright screen okay performance uh, it can charge other phones which is always a plus it's quite loud music wise and we have a solid fingerprint scanner those are the pros now on the con side we get the fact that the battery could be a bit better the selfies aren't very impressive the low light capture is totally unimpressive the exposure change in the video is a bummer and uh, the fact that we don't have android nuga is also a bit annoying and bloatware it may be a problem in the end the iPhone 7 Plus and the Huawei Mate 9 have dual cameras for one reason, bokeh capture. And for half their price, this one does bokeh capture quite well. So you can just get this phone and get some solid performance, loud acoustics and a bright screen. And the only caveat being maybe a bit of the battery. Other than that, and other than the low light capture, it serves its purpose as a, a cheaper replacement to the iPhone 7 Plus that sometimes may even look a little bit better if you ask me so this has been the review of the all x4 soul here at gsm.com bye bye